Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in my Mega Lottie Files course for designers. In this video, we're gonna learn how to create animations using expressions. Now, before I get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you haven't done already. Okay, so let's get started. Now, what are expressions? Expressions are basically, we all obviously already know, is mathematical formulas that you can use in After Effects in order to generate some animations without keyframing any single thing, right? Now, if I come here, I'm just gonna hide the first two layers and we're just gonna look at this icon that I have over here. Uh, if I go ahead and press, uh, you know, P on my keyboard, you can see that these are actually red in color and there are no keyframes at all, right? But the, the thing is, these are moving and how is that? And that's because I've used something called as a wiggle expression. Now, if I go ahead and open this up, you can see that I have some sort of an expression over here, which is basically some sort of a mathematical formula, some sort of a code that sort of generates these values. Now, what I'm actually doing over here is if I probably zoom in, you can see that this uh, you know, this whole icon sort of jiggles and, you know, wiggles from left to right and suddenly has that jerking movement, right? So as you can see over here, that's what is happening. Now, the thing here is that if you look at the values over here, only the X value is changing and the Y value is staying at 500 pixels, right? And that's what I have done. Now, I'm going to show you how to create this expression if you haven't done already. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just bring in this icon that I have over here. I'm going to hide this one. Uh, and as you can see, if I see this one, nothing is happening as I move through the timeline. And then I'm gonna press P on my keyboard to get the position property. I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard, click on the stopwatch, and now you're gonna get this code area. And I'm gonna type in wiggle, and you can see that you know it gives me these uh, two brackets. I'm gonna press Enter, and now I can enter some values. So let's say I'm gonna enter 10 comma 10. Now, uh, let's actually make this five comma 10. Now, what is five and what is 10? Now, five is the amount of repetition, which is basically the frequency, and 10 is the amount of pixels, right? So it's gonna be like every, so lower the frequency, slow the animation is gonna be, faster the frequency, faster the animation is gonna be, and 10 basically over here is how much of a difference is it from the original point. So let's take an example of one comma 10 to see how that looks, okay? And as you can see that the animation is so slow, but then you can see that wiggle happening slightly. If I go ahead and make this 20, for example, okay? You can see now the animation is going a little bit further than original. And if I go ahead and make this 50, for example, all right, you can see that the animation is moving even more, but then it's super slow. But if I go ahead and set the wiggle, the frequency of this to 10, it's going to animate faster, right? So if I go ahead and do this, you can see that it's so fast and wiggly and it's happening all the time, right? And 50 is basically the amount, how much of a deviation do you want? Now, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to a small number like 10 and 10, because that's what is comfortable for me. And you can see that it's enough of a wiggle animation. Now, the problem here is that it's happening on both the axes, so we don't really want that. We want it to happen on one axis. Now, there are two ways to do it. Um, now, the first one over here is you can just copy this expression. And basically, if I want to quickly explain what's happening here, is that this wiggle expression is applying to property zero, and this one is up, this one is being applied to the first property. So, as you can see over here, we have x, the first one is zero. The second one is one. As you can see over here, this is zero, this is one. So the first property X is zero and the Y property is one. And what I'm basically saying here is that the value of Y should be whatever it is, right? Which is in this case, 500 pixels. Let it be as it is. But the value zero, you know, the property zero, which is actually the X coordinate needs to wiggle 10 comma 10, right? Now that is one way to do it. Now, the other way to do it is if I go ahead and just remove the wiggle expression, I can just uh, hold down option and click here again to sort of reset that. What I can do is I can right click and I can probably choose separate dimensions. And now I'm gonna get the X position and the Y position separately. And now I can add the wiggle expression only to the X. So I'm just gonna say wiggle and I'm gonna say 10 comma 10. And now it's going to animate only on the X axis as you see over here. And this is pretty much the animation, you know, that we wanted. Perfect. Now we have added an expression over here. Okay, I'm gonna delete the one that we don't need because you know I'm just gonna have the first one that I made. And I also have these two streaks over here. Now for these two streaks, I've basically used trim parts as an animation. And I've also used an expression called as loop out. So basically what happens if you see over here that this animation is animating, right? It stops, but then the problem is we need it to start again, 
right? And I'm not, I've not kept a million keyframes over here. I've just kept four keyframes. And what happens when I do loop out is as the animation is over, it's immediately going to start again. It's going to loop the animation automatically without me having to create all of these keyframes. That's because I've used this expression called as loop out. Okay. Now, once we have both of these, right? Now we can choose what is sort of a comfortable duration for the animation. Now I've chosen four seconds, but if you want to make it shorter, that's even better. Let's say we make it one second. So I'm gonna press N on my keyboard. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna choose trim comp to work area. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just play this and you can see that it's going to loop and it looks super, super realistic. And it looks like a real animation, right? So now what do we do? Let's go ahead and see what happens when we export this in the Lottie Files plugin. Now, if you haven't checked out my video on how to export and test your animations, make sure to check out that video, but I'm gonna cover that here as well. So I'm gonna come down here to Windows. I'm gonna go ahead and choose extensions. I'm gonna choose Lottie Files. Okay, now once I have the Lottie Files plugin over here, I'm gonna go and choose the one that says, you know, icon animation, you know, underscore expressions. That's the one that we want. Uh, oh, by the way, before I go ahead and do that, let me go back. I can come down here to the settings over here. And now I'm gonna come here to the expressions section. Now here we have a couple of things, right? It says convert expressions to keyframes, extend the version beyond the work area. So basically it says select to key, convert keyframes beyond the work area that is time remapping. This is a little bit of a complicated concept. If you know what time remapping is, you're gonna understand what this option does, but we're not using time remapping over here, so we can ignore that. Then you can have select to remove properties that are used only for expressions, right? So what that means is we can choose to disable the expression property if I turn this on, but if I remove the expression property, then the animation is not going to happen because the entire animation is based on expressions. So we can't remove this. I'm gonna keep this as it is. Now, I'm not going to turn on this button that says convert expressions to keyframes. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on save for now, and I'm going to render the animation. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and uh, come down and then set the background to be white so we can see this a little bit better. And you can see over here that the animation is working, but it's sort of jittery in nature, right? It's not really working out perfectly. Now, sometimes these animations can have a problem depending on the type of expression you're using and how many, how fast the animation is moving. But here are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind in order to solve these issues. Because this animation, like this is wiggling way too much than what we want, right? Because if I show you the original one, if I just hide the one, if I play this one, you can see it's a little bit more subtle and not really that drastic in nature. So one thing that we can do is we can go back, you can come down here to the settings and we can turn on convert expressions to keyframes. Now what that is going to do, it's sort of going to disable the expression and break each and every frame into a keyframe. So now everything is going to be created as a keyframe rather than through the expression. So I'm gonna turn this on and then let's see what's gonna happen. Click on save and I'm gonna go ahead and render this out again. Right, And you can see that the problem still exists. Now, again, like I said, sometimes this can be a bug. Sometimes this may not work. So it's totally okay if you face this issue. Now I'm gonna show you a workaround that's gonna solve this problem. I'm gonna close this animation and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just um, duplicate this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste that. And I'm gonna call this uh, icon animation. I'm gonna say no expressions. And I'm just going to rename this to tutorial because I don't want it to be confused with the other one. I'm going to open this up and here uh, I'm going to come down over here and uh, actually press P on my keyboard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this position property, right click, all right? And I'm going to say keyframe assistant and I'm going to choose convert expression to keyframes. And now when I do that, it's going to go ahead and create keyframes for each and every frame that I have over here. All right, so now the expression doesn't exist anymore. It's all converted those expressions into keyframes. And if I play this, all right, you can see that the animation is exactly the way we wanted it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the streak here as well. Okay, I'm gonna press uh, P on my keyboard. Uh, I'm going to right click, choose uh, uh, convert expression to keyframes. I'm gonna press P on my keyboard here again, right click, um, convert expression to um, keyframes. Uh, I'm also going to uh, open this up because we also added the expression to the trim paths as well. So if I open the trim paths, you can see that I added the expression to the trim path as well. So I'm gonna right click, uh, I'm gonna choose uh, keyframe assistant, convert expression to keyframes. And even for the streak one, I'm going to open that up, come here down to the contents. I've added a trim paths animation. I'm gonna right click and choose um, convert expression to keyframes. 
Perfect. So now all of these are going to be being animated based on keyframes and not really expressions. All right. So now if I go ahead and play this, you can see that this is pretty fine. Now let's go to Lottie files. Let's open that up in After Effects. Let us wait for it to load. I'm going to choose the one that is no I anime, uh, which is basically icon animation, no expressions tutorial. I'm going to open that up. Uh, and now if we go ahead and play this, I'm going to add some background over here. You can see that the animation is exactly the way we intended it. And it's a lot better to be very, very, very honest. All right. So now sometimes expressions doesn't work. That's totally okay. This is a workaround for you to handle expressions. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.